Father, we will not wait. We let it start right now. We will not wait. We let it start right now. Let your glory fill the room. King of glory, we're starting right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We start right now. We start. We start. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. 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 Why would we wait? desire is to be with you is to be with you just to be with you is our desire just to be with you is our earnest plea to be lost in your presence to be engulfed in your presence we can't move from this place without your presence so show us your glory let your grace cover us and let your glory touch us as our hearts are lifted in praise and adoration to you. Let your glory rest in this room in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we don't come on our own, but we come in your presence. And so we're coming, running back to you. Here we come, running hard after you. Yes, Lord. And we wait in your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We embrace your glory, Lord. Your glory, Lord, hallelujah. We embrace your glory, Lord, as we wait mm -hmm. on you. Cover us in your glory this morning. Right there. We embrace your glory. We embrace your glory. Wow. Wow. Father, we embrace your glory. 
before we go to the word lift your hands everyone in the room and now begin to just make melody in your heart hallelujah jesus come on just sing unto the lord hallelujah we worship you lord we give you glory lord hallelujah jesus you are mighty god and we worship you that's it the father wants to hear from you hallelujah glory and honor to you jesus hallelujah praise and adoration to you lord hallelujah Praise and adoration we give you, Father. We give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. You're the mighty God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're the mighty God, and we praise you. Hallelujah. You're the mighty God, and we adore you. Hallelujah. You're the mighty God, and we lift you up. We lift you up. Oh, there's a staring. Hallelujah. There's a staring. Come on, that's it. Hallelujah. There's a staring. Great and mighty are you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, Zion. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Ah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Father. We bless your name. We embrace your glory. We embrace your glory. We embrace your glory. Come on, settle with us, Lord. We embrace you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 23. Verse 7. Yeah, yeah. I made a place for you right by me come on in come on in I've been waiting for you I've been waiting for you come on in I made a place for you right by me Come on in. I hear the Spirit saying that. Come on in. 
Come on in. I made a place for you right by me. Come on in. Come on in. I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting for you. Come on in. Come on in. I made a place for you right by me. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Wow. Proverbs chapter, uh huh. Draw us nearer to you, Father. Thank you. Times of refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Thank you, Elder Wilson, for the witness this morning. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. Two very familiar passages that the Lord speaks to us on this day Romans chapter 12 verses 1 through 3 Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 from the King James version of the scripture Proverbs 23 verse 7 for as he thinketh in his heart so is he eat and drink say he to thee but this heart is not with thee Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, reading from the Christian Standard Bible. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in the view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. This is your true worship. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. For by grace given to me, 
I tell everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he should think. Instead, think sensibly as God has distributed, distributed a measure of faith to each one. Thus far the scripture lesson. I want to speak to you this morning from the thought, thinking and faith. Thinking and faith. It's always difficult for me when I am between series to know exactly what I'm supposed to share with the people of God. It's easy when I um, I'm preaching a series because I know what I'm going to be sharing um, week to week for several weeks. But in between the series is when it's sometimes challenging for me because I want to make sure I hear clearly God's voice for you and I. And thinking and praying about the Lord, what the Lord would have for us today, on Friday I had a conversation with a dear friend of mine, a great man of God, um, and when we often talk, it's like I would think Mary and Elizabeth meeting. It causes something to leap within both of us, and that is my friend and my brother, Apostle Craig Coates, because I had this thought, and I felt like God was dealing with me, and in the busyness of my day, I heard the Holy Spirit say to me on Friday afternoon, stop. I went and sat in my family room and was quiet and God began to speak to me. And I began to have these thoughts. And I'm always one who likes to run my thoughts by others. I like to check my thoughts to make sure that, hey, if I'm thinking crazy, I'm not the only one thinking crazy. <laughs> and after the conversation, um, and it's usually in an iron sharpening, iron moment, I begin to hear clearly the voice of the Lord for us. I was then reminded of a post I read a few weeks ago by my wife's patch, pastor, a great man of God, Archbishop Ralph Dennis, who wrote in his transformational thought on this topic, faith and the deeper things of God. He said these words, to see the living God face to face is to have spiritual eyes open through the importance or the important practice of faith. The entirety of our relationship with God really boils down to faith. By faith, we trust in him even though we haven't seen him. By faith, we believe the Bible is truly his word. And it is by faith that we enter into his tangible presence where our hearts are transformed and our lives are changed. Paul prayed an important prayer at the beginning of Ephesians that I believe God desires for you and me today, he says. And then he shares a very powerful verse of scripture, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 through 18. And it is these words, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom, and revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened. Remember that, eyes of your heart enlightened. And that you may know what is the hope to which he's called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? We need the eyes of our hearts enlightened. Amen. We need to develop spiritual eyes to see all that is available to us in God. We need faith to guide us into deeper things of God. So my challenge is to you and I, let's go deeper. Amen. There is bigger fish in deeper water. I believe our thinking and faith opens the door to the deeper things of God. 
I'm going to say that again. I believe our thinking and faith opens the door to the deeper things of God. One of the most amazing gifts that God has given us is the human mind. The ability to learn, to think, to choose, and to reason is the essence of what makes us human. And while the ability to think makes us human, it actually goes deeper. Your thoughts become a reflection of who you really are. God certainly understands this, and he speaks to us through his word. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. It's one of the scriptures that is often misquoted. Because we, say, we often say, as a man thinketh, and what do you say? But where does he think? And then we miss the latter portion of, portion of the scripture that says, say he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. What you see here in this verse is a person who is saying one thing with their mouth, but their heart is in a completely different place. And when faced with this, they call it conundrum. Which one, which one do you believe? You believe what's in your heart. The thoughts and inclinations of the heart shape the reality of who you are. They shape your thinking, which will ultimately shape your actions. This is why thinking in faith is so important. Because faith has everything to do with your action. But action doesn't move without the thought process. Are you hearing me? What is thinking? It is the activity of searching out what must be true or cannot be true in the light of given facts or assumption. It, is, it extends the information we have and enables us to see the larger picture both clearly and wholly. It reveals falseness, inaccuracy, and error to those who wish to know. It is a powerful gift of God to be used in the service of truth. We must apply our thinking to the word of God. Amen. We must thoughtfully take the word in, dwell upon it, ponder its meaning, explore its implications, especially as it relates to our own lives. We must thoughtfully set it into practice. In doing so, we will be assisted by God's grace in ways far beyond anything we can understand on our own. God wants to bring you to some things that you don't know yet. And God wants to empower you to do some things you haven't done yet. There are some things that you have in your vision and in your dreams that God has given you. And God is saying to you, I'm going to release to you the grace to see it come to pass. But you've got to think and then act in faith. Your ideas and your images are, are things that you don't have to let fall by the wayside. But if you begin to think the thoughts of God with the dreams and visions that he gave you, then you begin to act in faith. Then the grace of God begins to work supernaturally for you. What are you saying, Bishop? Doors will open. Ways will be made. But have you stopped to think? We've created a culture who's looking for a handout. Everybody wants it quick, fast, and a hurry. But have you taken the time to think it through? Have you taken the time till it begins to possess the very being? Come on, Jesus. Come on. That dreams become a reality. Yeah. That visions begin to manifest. Yeah. And the prophetic word of your life begins to take formation and become something tangible rather than just in the heavenly realm. 
Hebrews 11.6 says, now without faith, it is impossible to please God. Since the one who draws near to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. It is impossible to please God outside of the realm of faith. The development of your faith will expand your possibilities. Anything is possible for you and I if we believe. Amen. Believing is not only, not only sets the boundaries for your life, it also forms the basis of your faith. Your faith cannot work if you do not believe. Amen. Believing affects my, our behavior. Let us remember that biblical believing is to accept something as fact without any sense, the five senses, without any sense, rim evidence. My evidence is not my body. My evidence is not how I feel. My evidence is what his word says. And this is where we struggle with faith. Because most of us don't want to really accept that we are still feeling conscious rather than word conscious. And we are more feeling conscious than we are word conscious. Word consciousness means that I cannot allow the current circumstances of the day to dictate what he has promised me in his word. And I've got to hold on to his word even when it doesn't look like it. Even when the new normal seems to be abnormal, I've got to understand I've got to bring the supernatural into my presence. God gives me the ability to bring supernatural power into my realm by my thinking and my faith. I believe God and I can't allow it to dictate my feelings, my pain, my struggle, my finances to dictate what God has said to me. Well, Bishop, that doesn't make sense because I hear all that stuff. I'm quoting the word. I'm saying the word. But my circumstances has ch hasn't changed. My question to you, but have you thought it through that you believe it instead of just saying it? Does it possess you? Have you allowed the word to possess you? I'm trying not to get ahead of myself, but I feel a preaching coming on me today because my brothers and sisters, when you and I stop to think about what God has done for us, what he wants to do for us, and we begin to consciously allow it to transform our mind, be renewed in our mind then faith becomes easy. Amen. And we won't be just wishing that it happens. But we know faith is real and tangible because his word has become the substance of who I am. In the beginning was the the word was with God and the word was God. It, that, what does that mean? It means there was substance. It's, if you tra take the translation, it was matter. It was something to work with. God gives you something to work with. This what defies all of human history and all of the world religions. God, when we take him at his word, gives you something to work with. So Ikea, sometimes we've got to learn to deconstruct the bad thoughts 
the bad things we've held on and then we've got to construct hallelujah a new way of thinking a new ideology so now my thinking is not based on any worldly thoughts but my thinking is based on the word of God this is why a sick person can declare that they healed and people are looking at the outward appearance but God is saying I'm doing something on the inside it's not a cop out it is a reality that no matter what my circumstances is the word of God is going to work mightily in me for by grace given to me I tell everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he should think Instead, think sensibly as God has distributed a measure of faith to each one. When you look at chapter 12 of Romans, verse number one is one of those pivotal chapters in the entire book of Romans. Paul begins to discuss what our faith looks like with one another. It's a phrase he uses four times here in the text. But before you can even get to, to, to understand the full discourse of, of Romans chapter 12, we have to understand our personal involvement with one another, and we, we need to know our first, our dynamic involvement with God. Amen. Step one is to respond to the mercies of God by presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. Has God been good to you? Yeah. Do you really understand that you are a recipient of the great mercies of God? Yeah. Are you glad for his mercy? Yeah. Are you glad for his grace? Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 So, the, so, so our response is to present ourselves. Come before the Lord. Yeah. Holy and pleasing to God. That means complete surrender. Have we told the Lord completely yes? That's total surrender. Someone said a great example of total surrender is the chicken and pig when they come to the breakfast table. When the chicken and the pig come to the breakfast table, one gives a gift, one gives their life. The chicken gives a gift. The chicken gives the egg. He just brings the gift. But when the pig comes to the table, he comes in the form a bacon. Y'all don't hear me. He's the bacon. One is the offering, one is the sacrifice. The pig brought the ham and the bacon. The chicken brought the egg. What do you bring when you come to worship? Do you just bring an egg? Or do you bring the ham and the bacon? Can you fry it up in the pan? <laughs> in other words, what do you give to the Lord? Are you willing to surrender all? Or are you walking in compromise? You say you're waiting on God to move for you. And God is saying, I'm looking for a total surrender. When you surrender, all oh, God gives you all. I'm going to calm down. Excuse me. I told you I felt like preaching today. We are called to offer ourselves to God. And once we offer ourselves to God, our relationship to the world is changed. When you begin to say yes, the world around you shifts. 
It's not the it's not the comfortable place. It is uncomfortable. It, 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 in fact, it don't even feel real good because you're wondering why everybody else is acting so different. Everybody else ain't acting different. You the one acting different. And it's a good thing, not a bad thing. Because Paul urges us here in the text, don't be conformed to the age. Don't give in to the hype of the world system. The world systems tend to leave out God. But you be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Notice this, that both commands are passive. We aren't conforming or transforming our minds. Notice that. Someone else is. That's the whole key to the text that we miss. See, that's where we mess up. We try to do it. I'm going to change the way I'm at. Yes, I am. I'm going to get in this word, and I'm going to memorize six scriptures a week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and Sunday, whatever bishops say, I'm going to say amen. And so we, we try to do these rudiments to make it happen for ourselves. Oh, God, help me preach today. You can't change yourself. You can't save yourself. Stop it at. Like my grandmother used to tell us when we were bad, just stop it at. Cut it out. Stop it at. I don't know what that means, but anybody ever heard of it? Just stop it at. Cut it out. Stop it. You're putting yourself in an emotional straitjacket because you're trying to do something that you haven't thought through and hasn't taken a conscious residence within you. You can't change yourself. But the God in you empowers you to change as you renew your mind. When God has all of us, and when the world has none of us, God does the world take out. And God does the work of renewing our confused minds. Are you hearing me today? He brings our thoughts in line with his own so that we think God's thoughts after him. God has a goal in renewing our minds. The renewal allows him to merge his thoughts with our thoughts so that he can bring his plans into our lives. He calls it his good and pleasing and perfect will. God has a purpose and a plan for each of our lives. One that finds us when we are fully surrendered. Are you hearing me? But as we'll see in the following verses, that purpose isn't just about us. You're not just saved for yourself. It's a greater purpose. It's about your ability to transform the world around you. Look at verse 3. I'm trying to hurry up here. Give me seven more minutes. If we understand that grace given to us, our worship will overflow into service to others. Whatever abilities, skills, or resources we have, they are the grace of God. They are gifts. So Paul says nobody should think of himself more highly then he should because everything we have is a gift. Everything you got is a gift. You don't brag about a birthday present as if you made it and paid for it yourself. Don't brag about the God-given gifts you have either like you did it yourself. Don't think too highly of yourself. 
In other words, realize that all that you have, all that you are, you owe it to God. See, when I come in here, I've got a bad load of reasons that, prom that, that prompts me to worship. And I don't need a worship leader to tell me to worship God. I, I, I thank you, Denise. I think I needed that witness. I don't, I don't need nobody to tell me to lift up my hands. But when I look over my last week, I can't get no help in it. And I start remembering what he's done for me, where he brought me from, and what he's done for me. My hands go up. My mouth begins to open. And I begin to praise and worship him because it was God that did I didn't do it on my own. But God did it. He gets the glory. He gets the honor. He gets the praise. Oh, I wish I had a real church. Does anybody know that God's been good? Has he made a way for anybody? Did he bring you out? Did you ought to open up your mouth and just give him praise? I didn't ask you if everything was all right. Has he been good to you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why sometimes I tell you, make sure you're sitting next to a guaranteed praiser. Hallelujah. But if you're sitting next to a temporary flick, that ain't the place to be sitting next to. I need to know, I need to sit, when I come to church, I need to have somebody on my row that knows why we came here. I didn't come on my own. In fact, I didn't even come to get something. But when I got up this morning, got up with some strength I got up with some power I got up knowing that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side where would I be so when I got here I entered into his gates with thanksgiving I entered his courts with some praise I was thankful and I began to bless the Lord do I have any guaranteed praises any guaranteed praises in the in the virtual sanctuary open up your mouth and give him praise hallelujah hallelujah i praise him because he's been good to me i praise him because my good days <laughs> away my bad days I praise him because he made a way out of nowhere do I have anybody in the room can praise him like that is there anybody in the room that know that the Lord's been good hallelujah I said the Lord's been good I said the Lord's been good hallelujah Hallelujah. When you come to the house of God, don't leave your mind at home. Mm -mm. When you come to the house of God, you should come with some thoughts. I can't get no help here. You ought to learn how to think. And see, when you start thinking, it begins to create an opportunity, a capacity for you to worship. Jesus helps us. He, he provokes us to think. I can't get no help here now. Hallelujah. He, he, he tells us in his word how to think. Oh, I can't get no help here now. Hallelujah. Oh, help me, Father. Help me, Father. Help me, Father. Help me right here, Father. He tells us, he says, look at the birds of the air. Think about it. How they, how they sow, sow no reap. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you more valuable than them? Then he says, consider Matthew 6. Consider the lilies of the field. 
They need to toil in the bin. They need to worry about how they grow. Yet they, they, they find themselves arrayed in his glory. Now, if God can comb the grass of the fields, and tomorrow they are thrown into the oven, the Bible says, how much more will he clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Think. Think before you worry. Think before you allow frustration to get the best of you. Think before your emotions takes control of you. What think about what he's done. Don't worry. Bishop, what, what, what you mean? Don't worry about what you should eat. Don't worry about what you should drink. Don't worry about what you should wear. For all these things, people who don't know God think about. People who don't know him as their heavenly father think about. That's right, Patrick. People who don't know him think about them. But if you know him, Jesus said, if you know your heavenly father knows that you need all these things, why worry about it? This is what I need you to do, Jesus said. Seek ye first. The kingdom and his righteousness and all other things. Thank you, Olivia. All other things shall be added unto you. Y'all don't hear me. Thinking and faith work together. You know why it's important, Marcus, thinking and faith is working together? Because God wants to bring you into a place of being. A new place of being. A new construction of the nowness of God where you are present and have all of your faculties open to his attributes. Oh, God, I hear you. Uh, yeah, it, that, that makes sense. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Hallelujah. That makes real good sense. Help me, Father. Help me, Father. All right. Bishop, what do you mean a state of being? Look what he says to the, to the scripture in scripture, Psalms number one. Blessed is the man. Who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sits in the seat of the, uh, 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 stands in the path of, sin, of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. You cannot give capacity to the world and its systems. You cannot walk, stand, or sit in the space of the ungodly. When you do, it begins to occupy that which needs to be filled by God so you can experience his fullness. Stop taking ungodly counsel. Stop standing in the direction of sinners. Stop standing in the things and with the people who don't name God. And don't sit in the seat. Don't be so comfortable with those who are scorners. But here it comes again. But your delight should be in the word of God. And in his word, in his law, you should meditate what? Day and night. Though the word of God should fill your capacity. That's all he's saying. And then he describes how we will be. He said, you shall be like a tree. Planted by the rivers of water. In other words, there is some stability and strength to you. Your roots will run deep. You will have supernatural supply from the rivers of water. You will bring forth your fruit in your season. Oh, I hear the Holy Ghost saying... That some of you are coming into your fruit bearing season. Hallelujah. You're getting ready to have some fruit and your fruit will remain. Your leaf will not wither. And whatsoever you do. It will what? And whatsoever you do it will what? And whatsoever you do it will what? I need you to say it. Whatsoever you do it will what? 
you'll prosper hallelujah you'll increase you'll be stronger you'll be vibrant hallelujah you'll be alive amen yes lord hallelujah yes lord hallelujah somebody praise him real good right there hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. I hear God say, I'm bringing you to a fruit bearing season. Hallelujah. 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 You won't just have leaves, but you're going to have some fruit. Hallelujah. You're going to prosper. Hallelujah. Because you're starting to think my thoughts, starting to walk in my ways. And you'll begin to see your life begin to prosper and increase. Hallelujah. Why? Because you said yes to God. He begins to do something great for you hallelujah hallelujah let me let me hurry along here help me father hallelujah and so he reminds us in Psalms 1 the ungodly are not so don't give space they don't exist in my world they're like the chaff which the wind drives away Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. The Lord knows your path. God knows right where you are on your journey. That's a place you ought to praise God. Some of you feel like God don't know where you are. He knows exactly where you are. Some of you feel like that you should be further along in your journey. God says, I know where you are and I'm going to meet you where you are and we're going to go where you need to be. You are not by yourself. Stop complaining. Stop counsel your pity party. Don't revoke the invitations. Hallelujah. Get up and shake yourself. Hallelujah. Because I'm going forward in the things of God. My dreams and my visions may have temporary delays, but I will not be denied of God's promise to me in my life. But it doesn't happen unless you think. Allow him to renew your mind. Jeremiah 7 and 8. Jeremiah 17 verse 7. New Living Translation said, but blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees. Here it comes again. Planted along a riverbank with roots that run deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered. Here it is. Such trees are not bothered. Such trees are not bothered. Such thinking, believing, faith walking believers are not bothered by the heat or worried about the droughts, the months of drought. Their leaves will stay green and they will never stop producing fruit. Hallelujah, because their trust is in me. I'm closing for real. It's my second closing. But I'm closing for real. And there are three points. And I'm going to go back over there and sit down. Hallelujah. Number one, thinking and faith works together. And you have to understand, number one, a yoke will lead to a yoke. When you give up your yoke of bondage and the way of thinking, you now become yoke, divinely connected to a higher power named God. Trudy, are you with me? Did you get it? I heard the revelation kick off right there. Your, when, when you give up that yoke, it will lead you to a greater yoke, a connecting partnership that will move you forward. Number two, a yielding leads to a yielding. When you yield, you will yield. I'm going to try it again. When you yield, you will yield. When you, when you surrender, you begin to gain. When you yield to him, he yields to you. 
I can't get no help here now. So when I give up this yoke, I connect with another yoke. When I yield, I yield. Now here's number three. When I, when I say yes, it leads to him saying yes. Oh, I could shout right there. When I surrender and say yes, he says yes. Yoke leads to a yoke. Yield leads to a yield. Yes leads to a yield. Just start thinking and allow faith to have its perfect way in your life. Everybody stand. I wanted to share this word with you and I'm so excited for what I see happening in the people of God's lives. Hallelujah. As we grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ as we allow our faith to soar. And as you think within your heart, the heart that allows God to renew it, and we begin to take on the thoughts of God, because he does the work as we present ourselves. Our faith will soar. Hallelujah. I believe God's word. I believe his word works for you and I. Even in the midst of what we're dealing with. I believe his word works. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Works for you and I. Hallelujah. Will you lift your hands? Lord, every man, woman, boy, and girl, under the sound of my voice, you have given the measure of faith. And as they have renewed their minds in your word, as they continue to allow their thoughts to be changed by your ever-changing, empowering word to us, your never-changing, empowering word to us, Release your power in the name of Jesus. Flood the hearts of your people now. Let the doors be open, the way be made. You are the king who's in your house, and we believe you to do it now for your people. Lift your hands a little higher and begin to worship the Lord because you're moving forward from strength to strength. You're becoming stronger. You're going to move in the wisdom of God and the faith of God begins to rise in your heart. You are never too young, never too old to see the faith of God happen in your heart. Father, thank you for your word working mightily in your people. Thank you, O oh God, for a greater release of your anointing your power and your love rest upon every man, woman, boy, and girl under the sound of my voice in the wonderful matchless name of Jesus. And all of God's people said amen. Amen. You may be seated. Pastor Wes is coming to extend the invitation to Christian discipleship and continue to further lead us in our worship experience.